Well, members of Amazulu regiments known as Amabuto will accompany the hearse that will transport the body of the Amazulu traditional Prime Minister Prince Mangosutu Ptelezi from Amoshri in Ulundi uh, to his home in Matlabatini. The procedure is similar to the one that followed the death of King Kudwil Zwelitini in 2021. The CEO of Itebole to Funerals, uh, Nomfundo um, Koi Zondo, says the hearse that transported the king's body will carry uh, Prince Butelezi's body. We vacated the whole mortuary. It was cleaned, empty, emptied and cleaned so that he can just be on his own in the mortuary. We have, we have extra security, as you can see, that is guarding the mortuary um, 24 hours, making sure that it is safe. We've done everything the same way we've done with the silo. Even the same um, uh, gentleman, uh, an old man from our company, uh, Ubaba Umalinga, who carried the silo, is the one who will be carrying Umtoana uh, Wagopindangene. Uh, and also, even the same hairs we used, we're using the same hairs that we used for the silo for him. We, we just felt he needs to be honored and given that dignity he deserves. Well, of course, there are diverse, diverse opinions on the political legacy of IFP founder Ingo Simango Sutu Mutilezi. Some see him as a collaborator of the apartheid rule, while others regard him as having played a significant role in liberating black South Africans. Now, some analysts say his role in helping shape the politics of South Africa can be described, uh, best described, as complex. In his student days, Butelezi's political roots were firmly planted in the ANC when he joined the Youth League. He worked with prominent leaders of the struggle, like Pixley Kaisaka Seme and Albert Lutuli, and had good relations with young leaders of the movement, such as Oliver Tambo and Nelson Mandela. In the late 1960s, Butelezi controversially decided to fight the apartheid system from within. A move he always maintained was approved by the ANC. In 1976, Nkosi Butelezi became chief minister of the KwaZulu self-governing territory after formally rejecting the homeland system. He said the system was imposed on them by law, but his detractors accused him of being an apartheid collaborator. The emergence of the, uh, of the Black Consciousness Movement, which totally rejected this idea that you could um, cooperate with the system, work within the system, but also try to, to destroy it. And as a result of the rise of the Black Consciousness Movement, I think there was general acceptance, especially amongst the youth, of the idea that the struggle meant no cooperation at all with the system of apartheid. And I think that then causes the friction and conflict between Butelezi and the rest of the liberation movement. By the late 1970s, it's claimed that Inkata Yengululego Yesizwe, the cultural organization earlier revived by Nkosi Butelezi, had about a million card-carrying members. The organization, later to be named the Inkata Freedom Party, was, according to Butelezi, started with the consent of Tambo. The ANC in exile was said to have then tried to convince Inkata to join the armed struggle. Butelezi said he met the ANC in London in 1979, where he rejected the policy of sanctions and the armed struggle. His relationship with the ANC started to deteriorate. Butelezi, who depended on the apartheid state, was thought a puppet of the regime and was criticized for pushing an agenda of tribal loyalties and ethnic interests above national unity. So then the legacy becomes complex because in, in KZN, for instance, when young people start taking on institutions of state, it meant also taking on institutions that were under Butelezi's uh, rule. And as a result, it led to that conflict where he then finds himself um, in a struggle against other liberation movements instead of the struggle everyone fighting towards the common goal, which was to end apartheid. But it led to a period of deadly political violence between ANC and IFP supporters in the mid-1980s to early 1990s. Denying that he ever sanctioned violence, Butelezi later would say that the violence occurred largely because of what he termed the ANC's People's War. During this time, members of the IFP received paramilitary training by the then Defence Force, which were later accused of several acts of atrocities. Butelezi always contended that IFP supporters were defending themselves against trained MK operatives. But he feels his party was infiltrated. But when they started killing us, I said, in accordance with our jurisprudence in this country, each 
one of us has an inalienable right to defend himself and loved ones. I told my people that they mustn't just lie down. They must, they must actually defend themselves. It was proven by a high court that they were not, they were not his courts, as was said. The ANC, of course, all over the world, they were saying that, you see, there are his courts for the ANC. But can any person in anything believe that 200 young people could face an army of the ANC? thousands of, of MK that were filtered into South Africa with AK rifles. That there were weapons that yeah. were given to the IFP, to people like Phil, Philip Powell, and given by people like Eugene de Kock. But all that, I, it had nothing to do with the IFP. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it has something to do with those individuals. And you know that Powell himself, it was revealed that he was actually infiltrated into the IFP by, 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 by the regime. You know that. Before relative peace was attained in 1994, at least 20,000 lives were lost. I, I disagree with a lot of, of, of my colleagues in this sometimes, is that much of the violence was not, much of what is called black on black violence, was not organized by the ANC or by the IFP. Most of it was instigated by the apartheid state trying to stay in power, so they decided to go with divide and rule. And they will recruit people from ranks of both organizations. And the complication for the IFP, in my view, was that because it operated from within the system and because it controlled the Guazulu police, then the Guazulu police became known to be used as a, as a force to repress the struggle against apartheid. And this, commentators say, counted against Butelezi, who wanted to be judged by history as a man of peace, who believed freedom could be achieved through a peaceful negotiated settlement. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission found Butelezi and the IFP guilty of gross human rights violations. He later would challenge this and reach an out-of-court settlement with the Commission. Post-1994, I think again, his role then changes because after the elections, He's played a very constructive role in our politics. Um, uh, towards um, the last, I mean, the last decade, uh, uh, um, he's tended to be an elderly statesman. When MPs were fighting in parliament, he'll be the voice of reason. But many criticize the fact that the two parties failed to ever reconcile. If I were to rewalk, walk back, I would do exactly, walk exactly the same path I did. The issue that made the ANC demonize me was the issue of imposing economic sanctions and disenvolvement in South Africa. Yes, there were differences at some point with us as the ANC, but there was a period where we believed that we cannot uh, perpetually remain and be stuck uh, with differences. We needed to pass that era, uh, reconcile and unite our people. But what was needed was for Butelezi and the ANC leadership to sit down and talk about what went wrong and to reconcile and to try and reconcile communities. Because we still have those scars. You go to Togoza, you see the, score, the scars of, the, of, of political violence. You go to Poshepstein, areas that were controlled by the, the IFP that got attacked by ANC supporters. You still have those, even though people now live together. But that is what they needed to do post-1990. And that is what they have not done. And this, experts say, left behind a militaristic culture in communities which underlies much of the violence that still exists in society. Renee Heiner, SABC News, Durban. Yeah, well, we're bringing you visuals now from uh, KwaZulu Natal, where we are seeing Amabuto uh, really starting to uh, gather there, where they will, of course, uh, be uh, accompanying the body of uh, the Prime Minister of the Amazulu Nation, um, uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, as his body is taken uh, to Mahlabatini uh, in KZN. Our reporter, Nonjabula Mtungwa Makamu, um, there as well, seeing some of these images Images. I mean, explain the atmosphere outside the royal palace for us there in Onjabulo. 
Well, yes, certainly, I must say that temperatures are continuing to increase here at Matlabatini as we wait here outside the home of the late founder of the IFP, uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. Well, um, we, earlier we had spoken to the leader or the region's chief of the Butelezi clan who did say that they are expecting a large numbers, almost like thousands of Amabuto who are going to be making their way here at the residence and I'm sure you can even see in the background even the noise as they are actually making their way um, but the family did say that you know today they are going to be um, making their way uh, to fetch uh, the body of uh, the late IFP leader at the mortuary currently they are in a meeting and they have confirmed to us that they are actually in the meeting with also the SANDF uh, members we were told that there are also other dignitaries that are also part of the meeting as well as the national government you know just to discuss about you know how they are going to be taking this day forward um, I mean the family did say that they have different uh, steps to this entire process you know to make it a success and also to allow the people of Matabatini to also bid farewell uh, to uh, the leader the family did say that the first set of the family is going to be making its way um, to um, the to the mortuary where they are actually going to be fetching um, um, uh, the, 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 the king I mean the, the late leader of the Amazulu um, uh, uh, the late leader of um, the um, um, uh, of the Butelezi uh, clan. But um, what is happening, as you can see in our visuals, that they are now making their way in the home um, of um, the um, um, of Butelezi. And um, as you can see, they are actually uh, giving, um, you know, that honor as Mpigai uh, Sebutelezi, um, who is uh, the chief of the Butelezi clan, did say that they are going to be um, uh, expecting a large numbers. Yesterday, we also did speak to um, uh, police as well, who did say that, you know, they are also going to be increasing security in various points, not just only here at uh, the um, Kwapindange in the palace, but also at um, the various venues, even along the route as uh, today the body is actually expected uh, to um, be brought here at home but um, just to also make clarity um, earlier when we spoke to um, the um, region king of the Butelezi clan he did say that um, what they are going to be doing today is that the first set of the family is actually going to be making its way to the mortuary where they are going to be performing some rituals and they will then later be joined by other members of the family and there is going to be a procession that will be um, um, leading here at um, the residence of Umtuanaga uh, Pindangene. Um, but um, um, that is um, actually all for now, but we are hoping that we are going to get more um, clarity and also just more, um, you know, um, what is expected today uh, to happen. It's back to you in studio. Yeah, well, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for that update. Uh, Nonjabulo Mtunga Makamu speaking to us.